Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and I'm back with another tricky question ahead of paper three. This is a mechanics question, and let's get into it. Now, the most important thing to do is draw a diagram. So, I'm going to first off draw the weight of the object, um, which is 60 times by G, uh, because it has a, a mass of 60 kg. Uh, and then I'm going to take components. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line down like this and an arrow there. And uh, it's important to note that this angle will always be the same angle as the slope. And then I will draw the uh, this uh, component right there, like so. And this one will be 60 G sine 20 because the angle is pointing towards that one. So it's opposite the angle. Uh, and the other one will be, of course, 60 G cos 20. Okay, lovely. Um, right, next thing to do is uh, find the components of the tension. So we've got tension from the string which is pulling this object up. So again, I'm going to draw a line out like so uh, with an arrow. Uh, and that one is adjacent to the angle, so that is T cos 35. And then I'm going to connect it up like so. So we've got this triangle and that one there will be T sine 35 because again it's opposite the 35 degree angle. Lovely. We always have a normal reaction when we have an object in contact with a surface like so. So that is the normal reaction we call that R. And then the last one is friction because it does say that it is on a rough inclined plane. And uh, where's friction acting? That is dependent on whether or not this object is going to slip down the slope or if it's going to start to slip up the slope. Well, we don't quite know that at the moment, but it does say determine the least possible tension in the rope. So we want tension to be working as little as possible, which means we need the support from the friction. So therefore, friction is going to be acting up the slope like so. Um, because it's just, just about to slip down, so friction is always going to oppose the motion, so it's going to push it up as much as it possibly can. Okay, diagram is done. It's looking good. And I'm just going to take this moment to say I'm very much looking forward to my live session on the weekend. I've got one on Saturday, one on Sunday. They are now both sold out. But if you are still interested, then you can get your hands on the recordings of those sessions, two papers, two sets of work solutions, and all video solutions to all the questions. Uh, link is in the description. Do check it out. Um, okay, right, let's get cracking. So we know that we are looking for the least possible tension in the rope. Now that happens when the frictional force um, is at its maximum. Uh, because we want as small tension as possible, so we want friction to do, be, be doing as much work as possible. Okay, and that happens when friction is equal to mu times by r. Uh, so in this case, that is one quarter times by r. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at parallel to the slope, and we're also going to look at perpendicular to the slope. Um, so let's look at first uh, parallel to the slope. Now, this object is in equilibrium, which means the forces are balanced. So the, uh, the up the slopes should equal the down the slopes. So let's look first at the up the slopes. We've got T cos 35. And we have also friction as well, um, which is the orange one, but I'm just going to call that a quarter r like so and we also and that is equal to uh, I'm not sure why these pens are so massive but I'm gonna have to go with it now 60 G sine 20 okay good uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rearrange for r because I know eventually I'm gonna want to eliminate r because I'm looking for the tension okay so rearranging for r 
I'm going to times through by 4 and I'm going to move um, the t cos 35 to the other side. So I'm going to get 240g sine 20 minus t cos 35. Oh no, I need to times that one by 4. Steady. Nearly got caught out there. Okay, lovely. Right, where should I do the perpendicular? I've not got a lot of space over there. So instead, I'm going to do it over here, I think. Yes, let's do it there. Okay, perpendicular. Again, the uh, ups and the downs must equal because it's in equilibrium. So what have we got? We've got um, the reactional force going up. And we've also got T sine 35. And this is what makes this question tricky is because a lot of people just always assume that the reactional force is equal to the cos component of the weight. That is the case if there are no other uh, forces. But in this case, because we've got tension push helping it up a little bit, then it's going to reduce the reactional force. So it's always good just to do an equation uh, where we just look at the ups and the downs and we set them equal to each other. Okay, so that's equal to the downs, which is 60g uh, cos 20. Okay, great. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to rearrange for R, just like I did with the other one. Um, and that will give me uh, 60g cos 20 uh, minus T sine 35. Okay, excellent. Um, now these two things will be equal to each other um, simply because they're both equal to R. So we can set up a equation where we have them equal to each other. So it's going to look like this. That's going to equal the bottom equation uh, like so. Um, and then it's just a sort of task of algebraic manipulation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over. Um, I'm going to move this one to actually I'm going to move this one to this side, and I'm going to move this one uh, to that side. Um, so that will give me on the left hand side two terms with t in it. So I could take a t out as well. Uh, so I have 30 sine 35 and I'll have negative 4 cos 35. So moving all the t's to the same side and then taking a factor of t out. Um, and then this side, I can also take out a factor of 60g. So that will give me cos 20. And when the other one comes over, it will be negative. Uh, and I've taken out a factor of 60g. So that 240g will just be 4 and then sine 20, like so. Uh, and then all I need to do is now divide through by this factor. So I get 60g cos 20 minus 4 sine 20 all over um, sine 35 minus 4 cos 35. And that is equal to... Um, just let me work this out. Um, what is that? 60g times my cos 20. That's cos of, uh, that's minus four sine. That's over. That is um, um, that is. I think that's about 93.1. I reckon roughly. I don't know. I don't have a calculator, but I think that's about right. Okay. Um, let me know if you got that right. Um, and again, if you want to see me do more applied content, then you've got my predicted paper version one, which is on YouTube already. And then also, again, I've got my two live sessions, which you can get the recordings of, link in the description. Anyway, I hope paper free goes well, and I will see you later. Bye for now.